Hi everyone, welcome back to another home safari. My name's Dan, I'm here with Jenna, and we are two of the Africa keepers here at the zoo. And we're hanging out with our vultures today. So we have two species of vultures out here. Uh, we have laughing faced vultures, which are those two guys over there. Their names are Ishtar, who's the one closest to you that's walking away, and Agra. And then we also have a Rupal's vulture, his name is Bubba. So today these guys um, are snacking on some axles, um, which is a bone that they have to pick the meat off of. Um, so in the wet, or vultures are scavengers. They're really well adapted to eating um, dead animals. They have really strong beaks. You can see how Agra is tearing that fat and that meat off of the bone. She's eating mainly the meat, picking the fat to the side. Um, vultures are highly specialized for this. So they've got really acidic stomachs um, to help them be able to eat meat that's maybe uh, starting to rot a little bit, but wouldn't be safe for us to eat. But different vultures are specialized um, to working on carcasses in different ways. So one thing you'll notice is that these guys don't have any feathers on their head. That's because they're sticking their heads into animal carcasses and that helps, keeps their heads cleaner rather than having a bunch of uh, feathers on there that get matted and blood and things. Um, they also, one thing you can notice between a difference between these guys, the lapids have shorter necks where the ruples has a much longer neck. So he can stick his head further into a carcass than the lapids can. Um, so that, but the lapids have a larger beak, so they can tear off things that maybe a Rupal's vulture, um, his beak isn't strong enough to take off. So that's, um, one thing that they do. They're also really high soaring birds. So if you've seen turkey vultures or black vultures, um, in the Cincinnati area, they fly really high and they're keeping an eye out for carcasses. Um, they can smell um, a rotten carcass, and that helps attract them and they congregate on that. So one thing, if you notice the lapids right now, they're kind of squabbling over a bone. Um, in Africa, a whole bunch of vultures will um, come down to one carcass at the same time and they'll squabble over it so that they can um, work together to break it down. But they kind of push each other around, some will get full, someone else will come in have their share. So that's a really natural thing for them to do. So I said that they were um, high soaring. So the Rupal's vulture is actually the highest soaring bird in the world. They can soar up to 37,000 feet in the air uh, looking for prey. They ride thermals up and down. So they ride hot air up and then kind of make their way down on the cooler air. But the Rupal's vulture actually flies at the same height that airplanes do. So it's pretty impressive. So African vultures, unfortunately, are one of the most endangered groups of animals in the world. Um, they're faced with a lot of threats in Africa, mainly poisoning, um, whether that's lead bullets or sometimes poachers will poison a carcass to cover up their tracks. And when the vultures come down to feed on that, Unfortunately, they're, um, they fall victim to the poison as well. We have lots of other animals out here in the savannah, kind of checking out what we're doing. You just saw Rose, our ostrich, come by. We have guinea fowl getting in the way. Um, if you guys have any questions while this is going on, feel free to shout them out. Um, the vultures kind of take turns working on these ox tails. There's plenty for any, everybody, but they just, they always want what the other one has. Amanda wants to know, um, for Delilah, if they live in groups, and if so, how many usually live together? That's a really good question. So it depends on the type of vulture. Uh, the lappet-faced vultures are more solitary or live in pairs. The ripples vultures live in big colonies, so you can get hundreds of birds together. Unfortunately, the Rupal's vultures are critically endangered, so their numbers are going down. Um, that's a really good question. So yeah, it depends on the type. That is not for you. 
Alexa from Germany wants to know why are they bald? They are bald to help keep their heads clean. So they're sticking their heads inside of carcasses um, and they can get a lot of blood and things on it and just to help keep themselves cleaner. Uh, they don't have feathers on their heads. Ainsley would like to know how often they eat and what is their favorite food. That's a really good question. So here at the zoo, they get lots of different, um, lots of different food. They get bones uh, three days a week, femur bones. Every other week they get an oxtail. They get some smaller carcasses like rabbits. The rabbits come to the zoo um, frozen. They also get. Um, like rats and quail that we use for training and some ground meat. I would say that rats are probably their favorite. Sloan would like to know if they will eat an animal that is sick. Um, they normally eat, eat animals that have passed away. So, um, but sometimes the larger vultures, like the lapids, will kind of swoop down and take an animal that seems like it's not doing very well. How many eggs do they lay at a time? That's a really good question. I think that these guys lay ma one, maybe two at a time. Not very many. Oh, oh. It takes a lot, oh, no. it takes a lot of um, energy for them to raise a chick. How long does it take the eggs to hatch? That is a good question. You know? It's typically, depending on the species, between 40 and 70 days. There you go. That's a really good question. So our vultures, um, the boys, Bubba and Ishtar, are both seven, and Agra is six. So they're still pretty young. These guys can live into their 40s or 50s. Mm -hmm. How much do they weigh? Uh, so Bubba and Ishtar are about 14 or 15 pounds. Um, Augur is about 18 or 19. So with vultures, the females are actually larger than the males. Kelly would like to know if they make a good pet. <laughs> they do not make a good pet. These guys can be really dangerous. They've got that really strong beak that's not something that you want to uh, mess around with. Also, they are endangered yes, so. and it would be really hard to keep at home. Yes. Rebecca would like to know if they have ears. They do have ears. So if you look at the lappets, you can see these holes kind of around these folds of skin with some small feathers around it. Those are their ear holes. So they don't have external ears like we do. <laughs> Elena would like to know why the feathers in their legs are white. Um, I don't know if we know exactly why uh, the, their coloration is the way that it is, but it is fun to look at. They kind of look like pants that they're wearing. <laughs> Denise would like to know where do they build their nests? Uh, so the lapids nest in trees and the uh, Ruffles vultures nest on cliff sides. What are the black birds? These guys are Kenyan crested guinea fowl. Um, so they're kind of similar to chickens. They're found in Africa. There's a few different species of guinea fowl, but ours are the crested. They've got those on. Those on it. Um, they've got those feather crests on top of their head. What <laughs> color eggs do they lay? Right. With maybe some marbling on them. Karina would like to know if they like people. Um, they are very curious, they're very smart birds, so they like to check out what's going on. Um, but if you had a vulture out in Africa, they would probably steer clear. Uh, some people uh, tuned in late, uh, they want to know what their names are. Okay, so um, the vulture closest right now is Ishtar, and next to him is his sister, Agra. And then we have a Rupal's vulture named Bubba over here as well. What is the difference between female and male vultures? Mainly size. The uh, females are a little bit bigger than the males, but 
they look about the same. Randy would like to know what's their, uh, what is their wingspan? That is a really good question. I think it's about, do you know? I think it's about six feet, depending on the type okay. of vulture. Yeah. So some vultures are larger than others, but they all play a really important role. Um, without vultures, there would be dead carcasses all over every different continent, um, which can cause the spread of disease, which is not good for humans. So vultures are really, really important. We hope you can see how cool and beautiful they actually are this close. A lot of people don't give them the credit they deserve. Uh, two more questions. One is from Leslie. She wants to know, do the vultures ever turn on the guinea fowl? <laughs> um, sometimes they'll give them a warning nip if they're trying to steal their food, but nothing, nothing too bad. And the last question is from Sarah. She wants to know, why is there an ostrich in there? <laughs> well, this is our savanna habitat, and it's got 11 different species of animals out here. You can see we've got some gazelle coming up to see what's going on. We'll toss them some treats as well. Um, impala, kudu, storks, um, pelicans. So ostriches are just one of the animals that live out here with our vultures. And they're animals that you would see together out on safari in Africa. Okay, so that's about all the time that we have for you guys today. Thanks so much for tuning in and checking out all the different animals that we have out in our savanna, but mainly our vultures. Like Jenna said, they're really important, really misunderstood animals. Very cool, very smart. So enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully you guys can make it out to the zoo soon. <laughs>